Commander Replay. We kick off a week of Game of Thrones themed decks with Flavisa Wildlings verse Hydar Winter Has Come, Andrada Faceless Men, and Brea Wheel of Fate. Find out who takes the Iron Throne next on Commander Replay. Hey guys, I want to take a quick second to thank all of my awesome Patreon supporters. We just hit over 100 Patreon supporters, so I can't say thank you to you guys enough. And we have two new Patreon supporters, Incatus and Useless Facts. You guys are awesome. If you want to help support the channel and vote on which decks I play next, feel free to check out my Patreon at the link below. Welcome back, everyone. Today we are looking at the Wildlings, a.k.a. LaVisa Cold Eyes. We are going to be playing a lot of Barbarians, Warriors, and Berserkers. Eh, primarily Warriors. Uh, when I was building the deck, I noticed that most of the creatures we wanted happened to be Warriors, so that's where we're at. Taking a look at our opening hand, Two-Lander is a bit risky. Two-Lander, no acceleration. We're going to mulligan that one. It's 37 lands in the deck. I, I kind of wanted it to be about 38. Uh, two lands plus Soul Ring seems a little bit better. No card draw in hand, but we have, like... All of our finishers? <laughs> no creatures, though. So, I don't know. Hopefully we just draw really well right here. Uh, this is good enough, but I don't think we should go down to six. And that may be one of the problems with this deck. There may be too many finishers in the deck. There's a creature. Uh, so we'll go Mountain a Soul Ring. And we'll pass like that. Uh, yeah, I counted about eight or nine finisher cards. Things like Coat of Arms, Acroma's Memorial, uh, Gratuitous Violence, Insult Injury, Savage Beating. All that sort of stuff. So I probably need to bring that down just a teeny bit. Uh, and can actually probably squeeze either another piece of removal and maybe another creature or two into the deck. Creature count was 26 last time I looked, which is not too bad. I wanted to maybe get it up one or two more, but like I said, I uh, have a lot of these big endgame cards in the deck. So that is a thing. Uh, it's going to bring it back to our turn. There's a shared animosity. We got blue, black, blue, and Brea. You know what? I wouldn't normally run this down right now, but against a lot of blue opponents, it's probably going to stick around. Um, and even if it does get blown up, we have Coat of Arms, so, you know, Shared Animosity can take the bullet for the Coat of Arms later. Uh, we have the Gratuitous Violence, same sort of thing, so, yeah. Uh, now, one flavor fail is that I did not get snow-covered mountains for this deck, even though I wanted to. But at the time of filming, they were about $1.25 a piece on Magic Online, and that's... You know, I didn't really want to spend 30 or $40 on just snow-covered mountains for this deck, so... <laughs> Sorry, guys. Just imagine that these are snow-covered mountains, and everything will come together much nicer. There's a Divining Top. That's actually a pretty good one right here. Uh, we want to hit some more lands. So let's play the Divining Top. Take a look with the Divining Top. Ooh, no lands on top. Well, this is going to be rough. How do we shuffle our library? Um... Busy Mortar is definitely to the bottom. This is going to be a rough three turns. Uh, I guess we put Gauntlet of Might on top. And pass like that. Uh, yeah, maybe this deck also needs to go to 38 lands. Because if we don't get an Armillary Sphere or something like that, then, uh, yeah. <laughs> Grim Tutor for the Atrada opponent. By the way, I am joined by three Patreon supporters today. Uh, first up, we have Chaotix2075 piloting this Etrata the Silencer deck, a deck that I played one time and was, like, a pretty difficult deck for me to pilot. I think this is one of those hard mode commanders. Like, it's not easy to get that uh, win condition off of Etrata. Um, But we'll see what they're up to today. See if they uh, can pilot the deck a little bit better than I did uh, when I played it. Uh, next up, we have Firemaker282 piloting this Hydar Rhymewind Master, and I played against this deck the other day. This is a Winter is Coming deck. It's all about snow-covered stuff. Uh, gonna be using a lot of the snow-covered abilities. Gonna be using a lot of the snow permanent abilities from Colt Snap, so uh, interested to see what's going on there. And then finally we have Brea Ethereum Shaper, uh, piloted by Rogaku, and they said that this deck is about determining the fate of the Game of Thrones characters. I don't know exactly what that means, but that's what they told me the deck is about, so we'll see what's happening. As far as our deck is going, we are not getting off to the aggressive start that I had hoped. Um, so that's not amazing, but eh, what can you do? Also, we're missing land drops already, and you guys know that I hate doing that, so... Nothing like taking a look with your divining top and realize that nothing's coming. <laughs> That is a bad feeling. No way to shuffle, no way to get out of it. So we're just going to have to hope that this game goes long and that we can make up those land drops one way or another. Uh, we're going to lay down this Gauntlet of Might right here. And Brea, the only opponent with red in their deck, so uh, Gauntlet of Might shouldn't be helping anyone else out too much. And we will pass turn like that. Missing another land drop. Uh, <laughs> that's Soul Ring. That Soul Ring, need Soul Ring and Gauntlet need to stick around, otherwise we're in real trouble. 
Yeah, maybe I should mulligan this hand one more time. Uh, there's actually a decent number of ways to draw cards or just generate value one way or another in this deck. We probably could have mulliganed into one of those. Would have been a pretty good idea, though I suppose we got the Divining Top. Very solid way to do so. Take a look at things. Opponent's going to use the Scrying Sheets. Let's see if they hit. They do. So, Snow-Covered Mountain into their hand. Uh, I found with Scrying Sheets in Commander, you really need to be running a lot of Snow-Covered Basics. Um, I tried it in a deck that was running about 21 Basics, and that really wasn't working out super well. I mean, you know, it's going to be hit and miss, of course, but at 21, you know, your chances are, what, roughly 1 and 4, 1 and 5, depending how far into your deck you are. Oh, Frozen Aether. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> Oh, well, that's, uh, that is an excellent flavor card by our opponent. <laughs> and that is going to make things as slow as molasses. You want to know what's terrible for creatures with haste? Coming in tapped. So it's going to bring it back to our turn, and I'm going to use the Divining Top on our upkeep. Really need to find some lands right here. Sadly, those lands will come in tapped, but uh, we cannot afford to miss any more land drops. I'm going to use the Soul Ring. Wow. Still no lands. That is not good. That is so, so bad. Uh, I guess we're going to get the Taurine Mauler down. Play the Taurine Mauler. This thing's probably going to need some removal because it always does. Take another look at the Divining Top. Finally a mountain. Oh my god. Uh, put the mountain on top and then draw with the Divining Top. Play the mountain. It'll come in tapped. And pass like that. So finally making a land drop, we missed two land drops in the middle right there, but we're still kind of in sketchy territory to make more of them. Would love to find an Armillary Sphere. Uh, Armillary Sphere is a card that I think people need to start running again. People have stopped running it, and, you know, unless you're playing white. If, uh, if you're playing white or green, obviously there's plenty of other ways to make sure you hit all your land drops, but for non-white and non-green decks, I think people really need to take another look at Armillary Sphere. Yeah, it's a teeny bit slow, but ensuring that you hit your land drops, make sure you hit your 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th land drops, really, really important. Uh, that's going to be an Ice Cage on our Taurine Mauler, so that's a sad face. Um, don't know that there's a lot of ways to get rid of that in this deck. It can't attack, block, or, and its activated abilities can't be activated. Raider's Wake. Whenever an opponent discards a card, that player loses two life. At the beginning of your end step, if you attack with a creature, target opponent discards a card. Ugh. I haven't seen that card more and more lately. You can do some stuff. We won't be, ah, we won't be able to draw with the Divining Top because it's going to come in tapped. That is a frustrating. Maybe we were better off not drawing with it last turn and just accepting the, uh, Miss of the land drop. So Divining Top is back. Let's get Gauntlet of Power into play. Start really powering up these mountains. <laughs> oh, we are so weak to a Vandal Blast. Oh, I think opponent's got counter magic. Yep, they're going to dissipate the Gauntlet of Power. Not great. Play the Divining Top. Take a look with the Divining Top. Hope for lands. There's a land. So we'll just have to leave that for next turn. And pass like that. Oh, right. So the Atrata deck, by the way, is the uh, Faceless Men deck that our opponent's piloting. So I think it's just going to be, like, all kill spells. There's a Sangromancer. And Embraya says, let's see if the Wheels of Fate turns out in your favor. Uh, we'll see. I wouldn't mind a wheel right here. We need lands badly. And we have so many more of these finishing type cards that, you know, we're likely to hit another one somewhere along the way. Opponent's going to go with the Scrying Sheets again. Let's see if they hit again. They miss. Oh yeah, finishing that thought on the scrying sheets, by the way. I think you really want to probably be up around 30 basics or so if you're going to try to make really good use of scrying sheets or have something like a divining top, some way to be looking at the top of your library. You know, a lot of the time a scroll rack, something like that. Obviously in blue, there's many, many ways to do that. So yeah, uh, but if you're like, if you're in mono white, you don't have a lot of ways to look at the top and you're just trying to go for the blind hit, then uh, it's it can be pretty rough. Opponent's going to play a drag under, return target creature to its owner's hand. They get to draw a card, so they're going to bounce the Sangromancer. Uh, and if there's a wheel coming, that's probably a really good idea. There's a Rhystic Study. That's a good one. Now, we do have Ugin in this deck, and if we go Ugin X2, we can get rid of the uh, Ice Cage. And uh, then we can get back to attacking with this Tori Mauler. And being that everyone's just leaving it alone for right now, uh, it could get massive. And with some of these doublers out, like, it, it could be one-shot lethal. That's a thing that could happen. Well, let's see what Bray has got for us. It's an arterial flow. Ooh. Rhystic Study is going to trigger. So it's a Bray discard deck? Seems bad. Opponent pays for the Rhystic Study. Yep, continue using that ability. 
We need to discard two. I think it's going to be the gratuitous violence and the coat of arms. Savage beating is probably the best finisher. Uh, two combats and double strike. Uh, Raider's Wake triggers a bunch of times. Everyone's going to be losing some life. Time of Ice. I'm pretty sure I'm glad that that one got discarded. Nibbles of Frost. Yep. <laughs> nice. So opponent with a uh, very flavorful Winter is Here blue deck. Uh, it's going to bring it back to our turn. We draw the land, play the land. It'll come in tapped. Let us. How much mana do we have? We have eight mana. That's six. Our commander is five. Yeah, I think it's going to be play the Hammer Fist. Ristic Study will trigger. I guess we'll pay for that. Uh, and then we'll take a look with the Divining Top, and we will put that mountain on top. No need for that Mizium Orders, pretty much at all. Wouldn't mind getting that Ogre Battle Driver at some point. Not that it'll do a lot because of the Frozen Ether, but... Yep. Pass the turn. Yep. The all-removal deck. Deadly Visit against our Hammer Fist Giant. Pretty annoying. Go always yes to the Taurine Mauler. Yield to that ability. So, Hammer Fist Giant down. Uh, and that's actually a really cool card if you have uh, one of these Anthem effects in play, because then it doesn't have to kill itself. And there are quite a few Anthems in the deck. We have Gauntlet of Might, Gauntlet of Power, Cage Sun. Uh, we have Vanquisher's Banner, plus our commander itself is also an Anthem. Extra Planar Lens coming down, that's not going to do much for us. Blue opponent getting some extra mana off the Extra Planar Lens. And a Rhyme Feather Owl, there it is. Power and toughness equal to the number of snow permanents on the battlefield. Uh, finally, someone else playing a creature that will hopefully eat some removal from this Atrata opponent. Bad news is that opponent can put a ice counter on our Taurine Mauler at instant speed, which will kill it because of the ice cage. Whenever enchanted creature becomes a target of spell or ability, destroy... Oh. Huh. I thought that worked the other way. I thought you destroyed the creature. No, you destroyed the ice cage. So, do we have anything that can target the Taurine Mauler? Nope. Nothing yet. So at some point, this thing's going to get real deadly. Although, sadly, Atrata sitting on two open mana. Plenty of kill spells that that could be. There's a Wheel of Fortune. Nice. That's exactly what we need to see. Our hand is bad. We are out of cards. Luckily, we won't be discarding too many. So Raider's Wake won't get us too, too bad. But a fresh seven will be very, very good. Opponent's going to go for throat on the owl. So very nice. Getting rid of some of that removal. Rhystic Study will trigger. Taurine Mauler will trigger. Here comes the Wheel of Fortune. It's a Wheel of Fortune. I don't know, maybe we should edit that out. All right, we got one land. I got a Spine of Isha. That can shoot down the Ice Cage. It can also shoot down the Frozen Ether. Ooh, I'm liking that. Uh, Rage Reflection's cool. Chromatic Lantern. City and Battle Axe. Uh, and everyone's tapped out, so this is glorious. We draw a mountain. Play a mountain. Comes in tapped. Sad face. What are we shooting? Ice Cage? How much mana do we have? We have... That's six, eight, nine. We have nine mana. Every, all right, so here's what'll happen. Everyone will likely tap out trying to uh, trying to play all of the fresh... Ooh, there was a Notion Thief in our opponent's hand. Glad we got rid of that. That would have been close. So I think I'm going to go Ruby Medallion right here. Uh, don't think we can pay for the rest of... Let's figure out our mana. So we're going to have seven mana left. Uh, this will cost five to get in. So uh, if we do that, then that'll cost three. Uh, I'm not going to pay. I think I can get Rage Reflection and Ogre Battle Driver into play. Nope, uh, we can't get both. Eh, maybe we should have paid right there. Whoops. Use the Tectonic Edge. Uh, pay for the Rhystic Study, and we'll take a look with the Divining Top. Manic Vandal, huh? Any artifacts we need to blow up? Not really, to be completely honest. So we'll put Manic Vandal to the bottom. Uh, I'm... Well, who do we need to kill? Eh, maybe we will redo that when we get back. We have one mountain in hand. Put the Myriad Landscape on top. We'll see if we can get that down next turn. Uh, but yep, we're going to pass like that. Solemn Simulacrum coming down for the Atrata opponent. They pay for the Rhystic Study. Solemn comes in tapped. Hopefully they don't leave that two mana open. I hope they spend that on something. Otherwise, this whole plan may not work. Oh, we can use the Obsidian Battle Axe to break the Ice Cage. Yeah. Wish I had thought of that last turn. Still don't think we had enough mana to do all that, though. That was six. Yeah, we didn't have enough mana to do all that, but this turn we should be able to. Frostwalker! Nice. When it becomes the target of spell or ability, sacrifice it. Wall of Frost. Eh, that's a nasty one. That is a nasty one. Pyrexian Ironfoot. Sweet. Draft All-Star right there. 
Ley Line of Anticipation. That's a pretty good one. Kaya Ghost Assassin. Uh-oh. That could reset all the counters on our Taurine Mauler. Ristic Study Taurine Mauler trigger. Let's see what they decide to do right here. Uh, gonna go for the each opponent discards card, and you draw a card. Uh, we'll just pitch the land since we have a bunch of lands on top. Ooh, nice. All right, so the Atrada opponent goes for a Vampiric Tutor, and they're gonna pay for the Ristic Study. Nice, they're tapped out. Oh, yep, Atrada's going down because the Atrada deck is all removal, and that is so bad for what we have going on. Uh, discard the Mountain. Uh, we end up losing some life to the Raiders' spoil to the Raiders' wake. Ooh, waste not. That is scary. So, opponent's certainly playing a wheel deck. Sadly, we only get one shot on the Spine of Isha, so that's, uh... There are many, many things worth shooting on the board right now. Let's bring it back to our turn. We draw a land. What are we doing this turn? So, if we go Spine of Isha, we can shoot the Frozen Aether, which means we can get... Well, assuming we have enough mana, which I don't know if we do. That's 8, 9, 10, 11... Yeah, okay, so if we did that, we'd have enough to go Spine of Isha, shoot the Frozen Aether, we could get our creature in untapped, which is cool, and then we could swing into the Kaya, take down the Kaya, but then there's a Waste Knot and a Raider's Wake in play, we could die to a wheel. So that's a little bit scary. Shooting the Waste Knot seems reasonably important. I wonder if there's some chance if the Frostwalker goes after the Kaya. Well, first things first, we need to get the Obsidian Battle Axe into play, so let's get that going. No, we're not going to pay for the Rhystic Study right here. We need all the mana we can get. Equip the Battle Axe, the Ice Cage gets destroyed. Uh, I think we actually need to... Oh, man. I know Atrada's going to be miserable for us, but... I think there's too many combo-y things going on over here with the uh, Brea deck. Play the Myriad Landscape. Take a look with the Divining Top. Ooh, we've got a Goto. Yeah, Goto's the type of card we want. So, Manic Vandal to the bottom, Mountain in the middle, and Goto on top. Uh, gonna send that over to the Brea. That is a 27 with Double Strike. And just like that, Brea out of the game. <laughs> One shot by the Taurine Mauler. <laughs> Everyone just kind of left it alone for a long time. It'll probably die in the next turn cycle. Let's get the Ogre Battle Driver into play. I think I may have clicked Always Pay in the Ristic Study. So... Actually, I'm not really sure what happened in the Ristic Study. Oh, opponent's gonna flash freeze our battle driver. Well, there that goes. Uh, past turn like that. I bet this Mauler's getting shot down. There's a Nev Disc. That'll come in tapped. Uh, Nev Disc positioned to hit us very hard. Oh, we can get that Manic Vandal. That's an artifact worth shooting. Opponent's gonna Mystical Tutor. Opponent goes for a Cyclonic Rift on top of their deck. Cold Steel Heart coming down for the Hydar opponent. And there's an Archaeomancer. Uh-oh. Instant or sorcery, huh? What do they have? Flash Free seems pretty good against our deck. Goes for the Drag Under. That's a sorcery, uh, but incredibly effective against our Taurine Mauler right here. No attacks for our opponent. Uh, they didn't use the Drag Under, so we're in good shape. We draw Goto. Don't actually remember how many more equipments are in the deck. There weren't a lot. There were only a few. But I think we need to, we need to blow up this Frozen Aether. This thing is just causing problems. Uh, we paying for the Ristic Study. That'll go into the Myriad Landscape. Yeah, I think we're paying. Shoot the Frozen Aether. Frozen Aether down. Uh, Nev Disc is about to untap. We need to do something about that. Or, if we're feeling lucky, uh, let's see if opponent's holding up priority. Take a look with the Divining Top. Mountain, Mountain, Manic Vandal. So, Mountain, Mountain, Manic Vandal on top. Uh, if we were feeling really risky, we could try shooting the Solemn Simulacrum, but let's draw with the Divining Top. Oh yeah, opponent's holding up priority. They have something. They have something. I'm gonna send this over to the wall. I'm gonna send this over to the blue opponent. Um, I suspect that they might block with the Wall of Frost. They're gonna throw something in front of it either way, but eh, let's see what they've got. Oh, right. They have a Ley Line of Anticipation. Uh, Drag Under can be played at instant speed. Yep, that's pretty good. So, Taurian Mauler back to the pan. Opponent's going to cast their Hydar. This all seems a bad. Now I don't know whether we should uh, let the Nev Disc go or not. Hydar will be super annoying for us. Although, eh, we can get rid of that with the Mizium Orders. So maybe that's not too bad. Yeah, I think we shoot the Nev Disc. We're going to get, we're going to lose way too much. Manic Vandal coming into play. Oh, opponent's going to counterspell that. Well, now we've got a Nev Disc that's going to untap. Uh, the only good news is that we'll get the Spine of Isha back, but uh, we've been missing land drops like crazy, so we're going to be in trouble. 
opponent coming our way for two. We go down to 30. So opponent blows up the Nev Disc and everything going down. Let's bring it back to our turn. Uh, the Spine of Isha does come back to our hand. Hydar is back in play. Opponent recasts Hydar on their turn. We draw the Divining Top. There is an Avatar of Woe in play. That's pretty scary. Uh, we have two mountains on top of our deck. I think it's time to crack the Myriad Landscape. We're going to take a turn off right here. See if opponents kind of burn some stuff against each other for a minute. Get a mountain. Get a mountain. It's turn 11, and we are on seven lands. That is pretty bad. That is, you guys know me, that is not how I like to play this game. <laughs> Definitely should have mulliganed the opener. The opener was not a good keep by any stretch. Let's take a look with the Divining Top. We've got land. Outpost Siege is a card. That is a card that I think we want. Kind of want all three of these cards. So we're going to go Flamekin Village to the bottom. Horn Power Stone in the middle. Uh, maybe I did that wrong. And then Outpost Siege on top. Yeah, we'll pass like that. I mean, the good news is that the blue opponent has finally run out of cards and their Ristic Study is gone. So they're down to one on their turn, but this could get scary. Atrata coming into play. This opponent's going to activate their Scrying Sheets. So opponent uses the Avatar of Woe to shoot down the Hydar. Sounds good to me. That's why we didn't play any creatures last turn. Uh, Mizia Mortar is sadly one damage short of being able to kill that Avatar. Two damage short. Also a damage short of the Atrata. Uh, do we have any damage? To, uh, I think I got rid of... The, I think there's still an insult in the deck. If we find insult and have the mana to do everything, then uh, let's bring it back to our turn. We draw the outpost siege. Hope this doesn't get countered. It does not. Choosing cons. Let's take a look at the top. Ooh. We could go. We could use the top, or we could play the Tauren Mauler. Tauren Mauler is just going to get shot. So let's take a look with the top. We have a combat celebrant. Oh boy. Uh, so we're going to put the land on top, obviously. Combat celebrant to the bottom. Worn Power Stone in the middle. Flamekin Village. Actually, Flamekin Village can come in untapped. Cool. Past turn. <laughs> Opponent said they just skipped through their turn. Oops. Well, it's not like they can't do anything. I mean, they still got the Avatar, so they can blow stuff up. Obviously, they, they would have liked to uh, get a little more done than that. But, uh, I mean, this game isn't... I don't think this game's going to end anytime soon. I would say that there's at least three, four, maybe more turns than that left to this game. For us right now, the biggest thing is just trying to use this outpost siege as much as we can and trying to generate as much value as possible we lost a lot of stuff early in this game a lot of our finishers went down actually uh we have a chroma's memorial in the deck which gives us protection from black which is really good against these two commanders yep they both target so they wouldn't be able to target opponent can use the scrying sheets trying to get past the lands not a land on top not a not a snow covered land anyway they play a land and they're, ooh, going to reality shift on the Avatar. All right, all right. Also realizing that they won't be able to do very much with Avatar staying in play. So, and then opponent's going to tap out and pass. Cool. Uh, so it brings it back to our turn. Outpost Siege is going to trigger. We draw the Worn Power Stone, play the Flamekin Village. Uh, we'll reveal the Taurine Mauler. Let's get the Worn Power Stone in. Comes in tapped. Take a look with the Divining Top. There's some cards. Ash Zealot to the bottom. Neheb, huh? Neheb is pretty cool. Combat Celebrant in the middle and Neheb on top? Um, Let's read Atrata one more time. Deals combat damage to a player. Exile target creature. That player controls. It can't be blocked, so that'll be getting through. Yeah, don't really want to start laying down creatures yet. Uh, Next turn, I think we go for the Spine. Yeah. So we'll set up to get rid of the Atrata, and then we're going to try to go for like a really massive hit. The goal is to try to get Levisa, Godo, Mauler and like Neheb all in at the same time. Well, I guess not Mauler because Mauler takes time to be effective. But yeah, I think we just keep passing for now. Oh, I'm going to have to redo the top. Uh, we'll want to put Ash Zealot so that it gets uh, picked up by the Outpost Siege. So opponent going to send everything into the blue opponent. Sure. We lose some life. I'm not sure how. Burnish Tart coming down. Opponent's only card. We're going to take a look with the Divining Top. Uh, Risa. So Neheb, Combat Celebrant, Ash Zealot. Outpost Siege will trigger. We draw the Combat Celebrant. How much mana do we have? That's 2, 8, 9, 10. We have 10 mana. It'll be 5 to get Levisa, 6 to get Godo. If we just shoot a Trotta, they probably just recast it. Hmm. Doesn't seem the best. Oh, I know. Maybe we just... Yeah, we play we play the Ash Zealot. Let them shoot the Ash Zealot. So then when that happens, a Trotta deals combat damage to the player. That player loses the game if they own 3 or more. Atrata shuffles into the library. Okay, so they'll have to recast Atrata. That'll be annoying for them. Let's get the Ash Zealot in. Do we have Swiftwood Boots in this deck? 
No, I didn't put Swiftfoot Boots or Lightning Greaves in the deck. Uh, we have Obsidian Battle Axe. That's already gone. Sad face. I don't think there's another equipment in the deck. Oh, yeah. So Lightning Greaves would be so good uh, for what we need. Crap. Take a look with the Divining Top, actually. Yeah, take a look with the Divining Top. Uh, we have Neheb, Scavenger Grounds, Scab Clan Berserker. That's a pretty cool one. Um, Scab Clan, Neheb, Scavenger Grounds. I mean, do we just Spine of Isha right now? If we do, it'll take them six to recast it. Although, maybe they have Counter Magic. Ugh. Question is, how long can we keep waiting? Send in the Ash Zealot. Opponent goes down to 23. I think we pass like that. I think we wait one more turn. We're not under, like, immense pressure right here. And if we can get opponent to tap out a lot of their mana, having just having to recast, that seems like a pretty good place to be. Ooh, that's a Whip of Erebos. That's a good one. Opponent will be gaining some life back. Ooh, opponent's going to Whip of Erebos something. Oh, that's a Solemn Simulacrum. Okay. Okay, there are worse things. Uh, the Avatar did get exiled off of Reality Shift, so that's a good one. Thought they were going to bring back the Avatar. Although, I guess, eh, you know. Notion Thief at the right time could be kind of scary. Sangramancer could gain him some life back. Opponent going to split up the 2-2s two and send the Atrata at us. No blocks for us. Opponent going to block and sack with the Burnished Heart. Yep. So Atrata's going to hit. It's going to exile the Ash Zealot, and we'll get a counter. Uh, but that does reshuffle the Atrata. And the big thing here is that they already spent their mana, so they can't recast it this turn. It's actually pretty huge. And then Solemn Simulacrum is going to get exiled. We go down to 23. Opponent going to use his Crying Sheets. Hydar coming into play. That's going to bring it back to our turn. Outpost Siege will trigger. It gets the Scavenger Ground. We draw Neheb, play the Scavenger Ground. Uh, maybe Neheb is the better option. How much mana do we have? We have 8, 9, 10, 11... Levisa is five, but we'll give. That's a warrior. That's a warrior. This is everything. Gives everything haste, which is pretty cool, and that means we get a bunch of mana in our second uh, in our second main phase, and that seems like pretty big game. Yeah, so I think it's just Levisa and Neheb. I am a little bit worried about removal and counter spells and things like that, but we're just gonna have to hope they don't have it. Is really kind of what we're on right here. So Levisa into play. Neheb into play. Oh, Levisa herself doesn't have haste, right? Forgot about that. Sadly, one short to activate to give her haste with the Flamekin Village. Uh, but we will swing into the Atrata opponent. And uh, opponent's going to Cyclonic Rift the Neheb. There are worse things. Two mana mode and Cyclonic Rift. There are... Could be the seven mana mode and Cyclonic Rift. That is significantly worse. So it comes back to the hand, but we can just try it again next turn. And if that's the card that they use, that tells me that they probably don't have a really good kill spell in hand, or a counter for that matter. Here comes Atrata. I mean, really though, the, they should have used a 7 mana mode on that Cyclonic Rift. I've seen them do that a couple times now. I'm going to have to chat with them about that. That If you have Cyclonic Rift, you know, unless you're about to die, don't use the uh, 2 mana mode on it. Opponent sending the 2-2 into us. Don't really know what's up there, but I'm not going to block. We go down to 21, opponent goes up to 30. Wicked Pact. Destroy two target non-black creatures. You lose five life. Interestingly, they go for their manifest creature and not the Hydar? Hmm. Seems suspect. So, Levisa goes back to the command zone. Uh, that was the one thing that I kind of wanted to stay in play. If Levisa's in play, then it's easy to give everything haste, uh, and that's pretty cool. It's going to be much tougher with Hydar uh, active now to really make these big kind of plays. Probably, well, we'd still have the Mizium Mortars. I'd love to be able to get to the place where we could shoot down the Atrata with the Mizium Mortars, but... Opponent can always whip, an, whip a Verbos, a blocker also. We'll need to keep that in mind. Crap, 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 crap. Ah, crap. I meant to use the top before... Uh, before I came back to our turn. Take a look with the Divining Top. Chaos Warp. That's a card. Scab Clan to the bottom. Chaos Warp in the middle and Mountain on top. Mountain gets exiled, draw the Chaos Warp, play the Mountain. Let's Mizium on Hydar. Gonna play Levisa. Make sure we have enough to leave up Chaos Warp. That's kind of the... We will not have enough to leave up Chaos Warp. Ah, oh, that one mana coming back to bite us. That sucks. Uh, well, in that case, let's... Let's play the Combat Celebrant. Actually, no, I'll just play the Mauler right here. Uh, I guess we can also play the Combat Celebrant. And we'll sit on the Chaos Warp, Scavenger Grounds if we need it. We're going to swing with the Atrata. Yep, Chaos Warp time. Start working up that casting cost. Uh, opponents are, opponent's going to draw two cards. Okay, it's not a counter spell yet. Let's Atrata go. They do get a Gonti. Yeah, Gonti's pretty good. 
Death Touch, kind of an issue for us. Uh, they're going to target the blue opponent. Not really interested in our red creatures. Opponent exiles a card, plays a Frost Breath. Oh. Tap up the two target creatures. Those creatures don't untap during their next untap step. Although that mechanic has not been working all the time the right way in Magic Online. We'll see if uh, see how that goes. Well, that's going to slow down the huge explosive play that I was hoping to make. Opponent going to play a Harvester of Souls. That's a good one. Opponent now has two Death Touch creatures. Going to make it pretty tough to get through. Opponent's going to commit our Sensei's Divining Top uh, into its owner's library, second from the top. Uh, do we care about that? I think it's fine. What's on top of our library? I don't remember. Doesn't matter. We should have a lot of mana. We can just cast whatever's on top of our library. The early game is a little bit weird with Outpost Siege. You start catching your seven drops and you don't have seven mana or you don't want to play them. Now that we have some mana available to us, it shouldn't be too big of an issue. Oh, that is an overloaded Cyclonic Rift. Well, it's going to slow everything down. I guess we should have just drawn with the top then. Oh, opponent can wheel. The wheel would be not great. Been trying to cultivate this hand for quite quite a long time. Yep, each player shuffles their hand and their graveyard. Well, all this cool stuff in our graveyard will be, you know, back on the table for us. We don't really have a way to get it back ourselves, so it's something. Hopefully we hit good hand. It's fine. I was hoping for something with card draw. There's not a lot of card draw, but there is mana. Mana is cool. Martyr of Frost. Reveal X blue cards from your hand. Sacrifice it. Counter targets balance as controller pays X. Opponent has five cards in hand. That's quite a few, actually. Uh, opponent going to play a Soul Ring. Zealous Conscript could be interesting. If opponents lay down something big and nasty. Opponent's going to use the Scrying Sheets. I uh, believe they hit a land right there. So, I mean, they've activated that three or four times and they've hit twice. Like, eh, it's fine. Like, if you get into a late game like this, it's all right. But early in the game when mana's precious, scrying sheets, it's not necessarily the best. Again, unless you have a divining top or something like that out. <laughs> There's the iceberg. Nice. <laughs> iceberg X5. Opponent down to three cards in hand. Uh, assumingly, probably the three good ones, I would guess. We could steal the iceberg and... Uh, drain all the mana from it that would be kind of fun and bring it back to our turn there's a jeska warrior adept is it jeska or yeska it's probably yeska if that is what like a scandinavian name i'd assume it's yeska um anyway that does shoot down the martyr of frost which is kind of cool so we're gonna play a mountain use all of our non-mountains to play this gauntlet of might gauntlet of might's totally gonna get countered isn't it uh, unless its controller pays x opponent could have up to three blue cards in hand we'll try it that gets through. Nice. So we've got 14 mana now. That's pretty cool. Start with Thran Dynamo. What do we have left? Uh, that's going to be 10, 13. Levisa will be 7. So we go 7 plus 6 or something like that. Uh, Bloodshot Trainee is not the worst thing I've ever seen. Let's get Levisa back into play. Levisa's in. Let's get Yeska. Oh, we can attack or we can shoot the Martyr of Frost. I'm going to go with attack right here. That seems like more fun. 6-4 Yeska? Yeah. And now we have three warriors in our hand, which can all come down with haste, which is pretty sweet. Like I said, though, we did lose all of our uh, card draw ability with all the stuff that went off right there. So opponent down to 19. Finally getting those life totals moving. Turn 17. This game has been stalemated for a while. <laughs> oh, man. Like an endless atlas off the top would be glorious. Would love to see that. Don't really want to wheel... Ugh, Toxic Deluge X4. Ugh. Well, so recast Lavisa next turn and then probably get some of these other things into play. Opponent goes down to 15. Actually, that puts their life total really low. Also gets rid of the Martyr. Not that the... Wasn't, like, hugely concerned about the Martyr, but, you know, happier with it gone. There's an Erebos. Life gain out of the question. Not really a thing in our deck. Had Luxidon Warhammer in here for a second, but pulled it out uh, just for deck slots, though. Maybe worth pulling back in if we uh, get rid of some of those... Uh, big finishing cards. There are definitely too many of those in the deck. Uh, Myriad Landscape. Opponent's going to crack their Myriad Landscape, get some lands. Opponent doing fantastic on land count. Let's, uh, so they have 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And this will get them two more, so 16. They have 16 lands on turn 17, which, you know, all things considered, they've essentially missed one land drop and Temple taps for two. That's really good. That's so much better than we've done. Uh, the blue opponent is on 15 lands, so they've missed two land drops. We have missed so many more than that. 
Um, we have 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, we've missed six land drops throughout this game. That is that is a lot. Two of them were early, which are those are the ones you really don't want to miss. Um, and a bunch more along the way. Things got awkward with that frozen ether out there, but uh, we do have mana doublers, and our opponent doesn't have that. Mana doublers do help us catch up on the amount of mana that we can produce over the course of the game pretty significantly. But yeah, I would have preferred to have just made all the land drops. Then we'd have even more mana. We have anything that makes black mana? Because if we did, I would totally uh, steal this Erebos for a little while. Um, there's an Urborg in play. We can steal that Erebos. Question is, how many lands, how many things do we draw? We're at 21 without really ways to gain life back, so yeah. Here's a Gauntlet of Power. Naming red? <laughs> Name is blue. Blue opponent has a lot of mana. Opponent can activate the Scrying Sheets. Hits with the Scrying Sheets. One land in hand. Uh, opponent does have a Mouth of Ronom now in play, so they can do four damage to a creature. Pretty relevant. Levisa will have four toughness when it comes in from the Gauntlet. Could be annoying. Hydar coming back to play. Yep. Gonna bring it back to our turn. We draw Goblin War Drums. Not a lot of creatures really floating around this game. Don't know that we need the War Drums so much, but we'll see. Play the Mountain. Uh, that's 18 mana off that. 19, 20, 21, plus 3 more is 24. 24 mana means I think we can just cast everything. Or, well, if we do the Erebos thing, yeah, if we want to do the Erebos bit. So first we're going to go with Levisa and see if opponents have removal, things like that. Levisa back to play. Next, we're going to go for this two-headed giant. Opponent's got a counterspell for that, so that's what we want to debate out. Two-headed giant gets exiled. I think now we probably try the zealous... Uh, let's see, how much mana do we have left? That's 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, I think it's zealous conscripts time now. Oh, I think opponent has another counter. They do. Oh, that was going to be such a sweet play, stealing their Erebos and drawing with it. Zealous Conscripts is a card that I need to use more, not necessarily for its combo potential, which is a thing that you can do with it, uh, but even just when opponent plays a good card and you just borrow it for a turn. One time I borrowed an Ugin, and it was insane. So, yeah, Zealous Conscripts is a really good card that I probably need to use a bit more than I do. Uh, unfortunately, this does wear down most of our creatures, getting lost into the removal, but we should be able to get this Bloodshot Trainee in right here. And being able to tap up for 4 damage right now, not a bad place to be. Nope, I think opponent's got other plans. Uh, if we had tapped our lands differently... Oh, opponent's going to Mouth of Ronom on the Levisa. Okay. Yep, thought that might happen at some point. So, oh man, the removal. So much removal. This is why we needed the card draw. I knew that we were going to lose a lot of things right here. Bloodshot Trainee, now a 3-4, but going to get bounced like crazy. Opponent did not draw with the Erebos right there. Oh, uh, actually, yeah, they spent all their mana, so... But now they can pretty much go wild with Erebos. Well, their life totals life total's still an object, but you get the idea. Even drawing drawing like two, three cards right here is probably pretty huge. Atrada coming back to play. Sure. It's a 4-6. Does make it harder to kill. Here's a Cemetery Reaper. Okay. Not a lot going on in the graveyards. Uh, two creatures in our graveyard, so they could get creatures that way. Opponent's going to put a lot of counters on the Iceberg. Oh, our timer is running low. Probably should have waited one more turn before trying the Zealous Conscripts Erebos bit, because I think that would have been enough to put us over the top. But uh, Although, uh, if Hydar untaps, then they can just bounce it. That could be an issue. I'm going to look with Scrying Sheets. Hits a land. I'm going to play Time of Ice. Tap target creature and opponent controls. It doesn't untap during its uncontrol controller's untap step. Targeting, targeting the Atrata. Very nice. Frost Titan coming down. This will tap more things down. Awesome. Uh, Torrential Gear Hulk coming in. This is probably going to grab a counter. Yep, plenty of counters available to say no to the Frost Titan. I'm going to go for the Dissipate, make sure it gets exiled. Cool. So Dissipate on the Frost Titan. I'm actually going to take this time to shoot the Rogue's Passage just so we don't get hit with that. I was going to draw a card with Erebos. Ooh, that's risky. It was down to 11. Levisa will come in with 4 power. This will have 5 power. That's nine. Uh, Menace. Opponent does have two blockers up. Menace isn't going to help us. Ugin off the top. Opponent's going to drag on. Ooh. Opponent's going to drag under the Cemetery Reaper. Cage Sun for the blue opponent. All the mana. So much mana. Uh, more importantly, takes Hydar out of range of the Bloodshot Trainee. There's a Herald's Horn. Let's get that in. Choosing Warrior. Recast our commander. Get the War Drums in. Give our commander haste. Pass the one. Opponent asking who I'm attacking. Not them. So, send off the attack. Let's put opponent to two. They can hit us back pretty hard, though. 
Opponent goes down to two, four commander, pass turn like that. Atrata stays tapped, that's good news. Opponent can no longer use their Erebos, out of life for that. Here's a Gonti though, Gonti's pretty good. So at this point, we just need to untap with Bloodshot Trainee, and we can just shoot opponent down if if it comes to that. Gonti gonna exile something from the blue opponent's library. Please not another Cyclonic Rift. What have we seen, two this game? Two and a half, I guess, so there was a two mana mode on one of them, I think. Opponent's going to play Reality Shift on Hydar. Ooh, things going to get spicy right here. Uh, so opponent will get one chance to use it. What do they want to use it on? Now, if they use it on Torrential, they could flash something back, but we can also Scavenger Grounds in response. Although I guess they only have a counter spell, which is like... Can do it on the Gonti. Yeah, it's a little bit risky, because now they can recast Gonti. Gonti coming back. Gonti's going to get another crack at it. They didn't like the first card. Can exile stuff from our library. Not a lot of burn in our deck. Very little removal, actually. It's supposed to be more aggressive, so I went really light on the removal. Went for things that didn't hit our stuff, like Volcanic Offering and Mizium Mortars. Opponent exiles one of our cards. There is an Ugin in our deck, and Ugin is always scary. Opponent tapping up a bunch of mana. It's not scary at all. It's a right replication on the Gonti. Ooh, that's not good. Opponent putting counters on the Iceberg. So, kicked right of replication on Gonti. Opponent's probably going to get some stuff. Uh, they're going to spread around those triggers. I actually don't even think I have Blasphemous Act in this deck. I can't remember if I kept it in or not. Yep, no Blasphemous Act. There's a Glacial Wall. That was the best card. Oop, yep. All right, I think we are I think we can at least get rid of the uh, Atrata opponent. Man, I would love to hit an extra card with this. Opponent's going to Scrying Sheets. Opponent's going to get to tap stuff with the Time of Ice. Taps the Gonti. Cool. Hydar are coming back to play. So we're back to our turn. Trigger on the stack. Shoot the... Oh, that's creatures only. Crap. Oh, we can't shoot players with it. All right. Uh, always yield to that trigger. Hope we hit a creature. It's a mountain. It's not good. Draw a mountain. Play a mountain. Send both over to the Chaotix opponent. They get the choice to kill one. Killing the Bloodshot is probably the one they want to go with. Uh, they're going to Pongify. Oh, my God. Really? So Pongify on our commander... Opponent's going to block with the Gear Hulk, block with the wall. Yep. Trainee will go down. Recast Lavisa. Pongify. Mono blue spot removal. Watsy, Watsy, Watsy. Now, opponent's pretty much got free range. Opponent's got, what, three or four cards left in exile? Three from us, one from our opponent. Oh, there's our Scab Clan Berserker. Would have liked that one. 5-5 five, five with haste. That's a problem. There's our Neheb. There's, uh, there's Insurrection. So, 20 turns. Actually, I don't know if opponent has 40 damage, honestly. If we catch a Homeward Path, I don't know if Homeward Path's in the deck, but if we catch it, opponent's in real trouble. Oh, it's not in the deck. Sad face. Only 7 at us so far. 12 at us. I don't think opponent has enough to kill us. A Cyclonic Rift would be awesome. We'd get all our stuff back. Yeah, um, opponent's not going to kill either of us. We're both going to be hurting real bad, but... Yeah, and that's the thing. So Insurrection, uh, I don't use it that much anymore because when you face blue decks, it's bad. Like, blue decks just don't lay down that many creatures. And, like, when you play Insurrection, you probably need it to kill one or two players, if not everyone. And a lot of times it just doesn't. Uh, so that Scab Clan Berserker is now Renown. Uh, it, it says, Whenever opponent casts a non-creature spell, if it's Renown, does two damage to that player. Not going to be a lot of things coming down for the blue opponent. They're at five. We're at six. However, opponent does not have very many blockers up. Only one in that glacial wall. Their commander's already in play. They've cast all of our cards out of exile. They have one blue card left in exile for, uh, from the other opponent. Reasonable chance that we can just kill them on the backswing. Especially if we hit creatures off the Herald's Horn. Uh, Neheb's going to make 37 red mana. Ristic Study coming down. Uh, it's going to burn our clock. Actually, we can just untap. Yeah, opponent doesn't have a second blocker yet. They will need one. Their clock is also running low. Cemetery Reaper, there's the second blocker. Crap, so we need another creature now. There's a Kalitas. That's a good one. So this deck will need a Homeward Path. There's a Dark Steel Plate. Erebos is a creature. Opponent has four creatures now. Yeah, opponent has four blockers. Ugh, this is going to be tough. This is going to be tough. Ugin off the top. We can also just bolt them in the face. <laughs> Cal Ooh, opponent taps their Kalitas. They're going to destroy our commander. That's okay. We can recast it. Oh, that, does, that makes another blocker. So they still have one, two, three. Ah, they still have four blockers. Crap. 
Brain Freeze. Oh boy. Target opponent puts the top three cards of the library into the graveyard. That's going to get stormed seven times. Ristic Study triggers. Scab Clan triggers. <laughs> uh, we have an ape. Also, Hydar is back in under, under its owner's control. Opponent's going to Scrying Sheets. That, ooh, opponent has one, two. Opponent still has four blockers, so we still need to catch a creature with haste. Uh, oh, we get two creatures back. We might be able to win. Uh, actually, Hydar can kill us if they want. Hmm, let's see what they do. Oh, they bounce. We might be able to win. Glacial Wall, we're going to be fighting the clock, though. Opponent's going to deep freeze on the Cemetery Reaper. All right, back to our turn. It's a combat celebrant. And a Goto, oh my god. Recast Lavisa. Actually, I think Lavisa is too expensive. Ristic Study will trigger. Crap. Plane of Heb. Haste that thing. See if we can get our commander. We can, actually. Nope, we're one short. Crap. Uh, actually, our equipment was back in the deck. We could have used that right there. Whoops. Opponent's going to block one. Opponent. Oh, a flick triggers. Opponent will die. Nice. Opponent largely can't cast spells. So, Atrada finally goes down. We have 18 seconds on our clock. We need to get through with one creature. Opponent's got an Icy Manipulator. Puts him to one. Iron Foot. Herald Torn triggers. Opponent's going to Icy Manipulate on the Combat Celebrant. Attack with everything. Oh! Afflict! Opponent will die to Afflict! Nice! Oh my god, are we going to get there with 10 seconds left? They haven't caught it yet. Oh, they bounced the Heb! Come on! Come on! Oh, we time out! Oh my god! Ah, uh, so if we don't time out right there, what happens? Uh, if we don't time out right there, Lavisa is in play, and I think Lavisa gets through. Oh man, ah, <sighs> uh, here's the pro uh, and this is the thing that frustrates me about Magic Online is one that Urborg was in play. That thing eats a lot of the clock. It takes a long time to tap while Urborg is down. And two, if you notice, even though we autoed the Herald Horn trigger and I was clicking as fast as I can, it was still using like four or five seconds at a time just to get through that trigger and like, you know, clicking as fast as you can. And it's just like there's this incredible system lag that ugh. as a game goes longer, it just builds up more and more. Like if they fix nothing else with Magic Online, I wish they would do that. And I'm, I get that that's probably like a big rewrite of how the code works in the game and the game log and things like that, but it's so frustrating how things can get so slow at the end of the game. Oh, that was so frustrating. Anyway, uh, looking at this deck, a couple things. One, I need less stuff in this five drop slot, like we, gratuitous violence maybe could go. Uh, Savage Beating is probably the one I would keep as far as the finishers go. Coat of Arms is pretty good, um, might keep that one. Though it's tough to say. So, I mean, how many creatures will we realistically have on the battlefield? Three or four, maybe? Maybe we're better off with the doubler instead of instead of Coat of Arms. I'm not sure. Uh, Insurrection, again, it's bad against blue, good against green. If a green deck's out there and it just has a board littered with creatures, then you're going to get a lot of power. But when you're facing heavy control like that, Insurrection is not the best. Um, a Chroma's Memorial would have actually been really good in this game. Yeah, oh man, I'm, frust I'm frustrated at the end of that one because we could have won that. Oh, uh, yeah, trying to calm myself down. It was very winnable, but the clock, I knew I should have made a 60-minute game, but I don't know. I guess when I play, like, these jankier decks with Patreons, I just got to go to 60-minute games because 40 does run out very quickly. The game starts lagging. Also, I start talking through complex situations. It just takes a while to resolve. Anyway, yeah, a little bit frustrated right there. Game clock getting to me, just the system lag, just, you know, when you're under that, you're under that pressure trying to get everything done quickly, and the system just doesn't allow you to do it can get pretty frustrating so anyway uh it was a super fun game and we got to see some really cool stuff out of our opponent's decks um with the atrada and the uh the, the winter has come but yeah cool stuff need to fix this deck up just a little bit and you know i think if we do that i think if there's just if it's more creature dense then we are probably just able to attack more early in the game and get more stuff going that way i kept a really oh man if we didn't keep if we didn't keep such a suspect opening hand that's probably a, gonna help out a lot too but uh, also, there was a turn where Lightning Greaves in the deck, we could have gone Goto for Lightning Greaves. That would have changed up a bunch of things. A lot of things in that game that all brought us to those moments towards the end that if we played it differently, maybe people die sooner and things go smoother. But yeah. Um, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that video. As always, feel free to comment, like, or subscribe. Thank you for watching.